Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is just kind of go over conditional statements as well as their parts. So basically what is a conditional statement? Well a conditional statement is just going to be a statement but in the form of what we call if then form. And basically what it is is you're going to have if a hypothesis then a conclusion. So we can take any statement you know for instance a circle has a radius and you know I'll just kind of do this. A circle has a radius. So that is a statement, right? And it's not a question, it's a statement. Um, then if I want to make this a conditional statement, basically what we're going to do is we're going to include what we call the if and then the then. So if, you know, you could say if it is a circle or if we have a circle. So if, um, you know, I'll say there is a circle, then it has a radius. Okay? But more importantly, I don't want to get into examples because that's going to be for a different video. But more importantly, what you have is an if then. So in reality, this little portion, this if there is a circle, is what we call the hypothesis. And then the then is what we call the conclusion. So an if then statement is basically, or a conditional statement is basically what we just like to call an if then statement. If hypothesis then conclusion. And you can take really any statement and make it into a conditional statement by including the if and the then. Um, now there's a couple parts that come with conditional statements. As we talked about, we have the hypothesis, which always follows the if, and then the conclusion, which always follows the then. Um, a lot of times we also like to uh, relabel these. And to make kind of our life a little bit easier, we can relabel them as if p where P is going to be represents the statement that's the hypothesis, then Q, where Q represents the conclusion. So a lot of times you'll see and you'll read a lot like if P, then Q. Well, that's exactly what they're saying there, but if the hypothesis, then the conclusion. Um, now, on top of that, we also have a couple things, which is the negation. Okay? And negation just basically means the opposite. Okay, so when you're dealing with the opposite, you know, if I said, uh, you know, if it's a circle, well, kind of the opposite is, you know, anything that's really, I'm not sure if there's exactly not a circle or opposite of a circle, but you can just say, you know, if it's not a circle, it basically means the undoing of it. Um, kind of like the negation with, you know, negative numbers. And, ne you know, negative number, the negation of a negative number is a positive number. The negation of a positive number is a negative number. So it always doesn't mean the not, it's not always means negative, uh, it just means it's the opposite. So negation is going to be the opposite. Um, we also have a couple different statements. For instance, we have the converse. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to kind of rewrite them using a little bit, uh, using some kind of notation. So negation is opposite. A lot of times we write that, which is a little tilde. So we could say tilde p or opposite of q. So that basically means the opposite of there. So the exact opposite of whatever our statement is. You know, like for instance, if I say, you know, I'm bald. Well, then I guess the opposite would be I have hair. I mean, um, so the converse is basically going to be you're switching the conclusion and the opposite. So instead of saying if p then q, it's now going to be if q then p. So whatever you take, whatever was in your conclusion, whatever was in your in uh, your hypothesis, and just basically swap them. Uh, we have the inverse which is basically going to be just the same. It's going to be in the same order, if p, then q. But it's going to be negation of them. So if the opposite of p, then the opposite of q. And then the last one we have is the contrapositive. Which is basically like a mix of the converse and the inverse. We're going to swap them as well as negate them. So that's going to be if opposite of q, then opposite of p. And again, I'm going to go through some examples of you know, just working through real life examples. But I just want to kind of go through exactly um, you know, for you so you can be able to see you know, how exactly, first of all, what exactly the conditional statement is, and then as well as how to identify uh, different forms of conditional statements. Thanks.